everybody, it is Julie from Pages and Pens, and today I am here with the beginning of a series of videos, kind of recapping 2018. Let's jump right into this video, which is my top 10 books that released in 2018, that I read in 2018, and that I loved in 2018. I don't think they're going to be a surprise to you. I don't think, because I've talked about all of these quite a bit. <laughs> I do have 10 books and two of them I don't have physically so I'm going to talk about them right off the bat and that is Sadie by Courtney Summers. This is a YA thriller mystery. It follows Sadie as she looks for her sister's killer. Her sister at the beginning of the book has been murdered, kidnapped, raped, murdered and Sadie believes she knows who's done it and she goes out looking for her sister's killer and you follow Sadie and you also follow a podcast that follows Sadie after the fact kind of recounting where she goes, who she ran into, who she talked to on this quest to find her sister's killer. Amazing. It was a five-star read. I don't read many thrillers, mysteries, murder mysteries, so when I do and I really connect with them, they really, really stand out to me. For me, this one really got me because I know if anybody hurt any of my sisters, I would move heaven and earth to make that person's life a living hell. You do deal with really, really really difficult topics in this one, like abuse, neglect, pedophilia, murder, violence. It, it's very dark, but I loved the formatting. Again, a book that really stood out to me because of the formatting, which I'm finding I really adore in books. Like when an author takes a unique spin on formatting and presenting a story to me, I usually like it. Like it either goes horribly right or horribly wrong. In this particular case, it went horribly right. I got an e-arc of this. I've heard the audiobook is phenomenal, but the e-arc was just as great and I fell in love with the story. If you haven't read this one for some reason and you've been waiting to see what I thought about it, I don't know why because everybody's talking about it, go read this book. I don't think you will regret it. Second up, or number nine, I guess. I don't know. Am I ranking up to number one? Probably. So number nine would be Starry Eyes by Jen Bennett. I found Jen Bennett in 2018 and I read a lot of Jen Bennett in 2018 and I love her writing. She does contemporary so well. It follows our main character who has had this like lifelong friendship with this boy who lives close to her and they had a falling out because their families had a falling out like her father and stepmother and then his mother's had a falling out. They have like a shop space near each other like a store space in the same like strip mall kind of thing and the main love interest's mother's runs a sex shop and then the main character's parents runs a chiropractic exam like a chiropractic office or something and they keep getting mail for one another and they think that the sex shop clients are keeping the other clients from coming into the offices anyway Romeo and Juliet-esque but like not that extreme but it follows them as they're going on like this friend's camping trip it's supposed to be like the senior week type of a deal and things go horribly awry they kind of get lost out there in the wilderness on their own and I love Jen Bennett for a couple of reasons. She writes really smart, really complex, really well-written uh, families, friend groups, main characters, relationships. They're sex positive. There is sex in these YAs, like in most of her YAs that I've read, there is sex. Realistic and just, it, they're so good. I love them so much. I was so excited to have this arc. I have since placed an order for the physical copy and it's just it's amazing. I really, really like her writing. She's swiftly become one of my favorite, like, go-to contemporary authors. If she writes a contemporary, I'm gonna read it, even if it's YA. You should check her out if you haven't already. I don't know why you wouldn't have, but just, you should go do it. Number eight would be a book that didn't actually get five stars for me, but got close and far exceeded my expectations for this book. It's a sequel, and it is legendary. This is the ARC copy. Why did I pull the ARC and not the finished book? Anyway, I have the finished book, but I read the ARC. I really, really enjoyed this. I didn't love Caraval. I gave it three stars. This one I gave a high four, four and a half stars to. Because it follows Scarlet, it follows the sister of the main character of Caraval through a second Caraval. It follows these really cool, like almost tarot card esque storyline, and it's kind of got like a vampiric vibe, a very mystical sense throughout this whole book. I personally just really, really vibed with the theme of this book and the feeling of this book and Jax. And there's a chapter in this. Now I forget the infamous chapter, but like. There's like a smexy scene in this book where you're like, 
okay, Stephanie Garber, I see you coming. It wasn't perfect, but it was so far leaps and bounds above where Carval was that I couldn't not include this because it really, really shocked me with how much I liked this considering I didn't love the first one. I need finale in my life because I need to know how this all wraps up. Then we're gonna get into number seven, which is I think my only romance. I think it is. It's The Kiss Quotient by Helen Wong. You should not be surprised to see this on my list. It's on everybody's list this year. And this is an amazing, I believe, own voices story about a woman with autism. She's an adult. It's an adult romance who has intimacy issues. So she decides to go and hire Michael as an escort because she needs a little bit of help in the love department. She feels like maybe her relationships are failing because she's not comfortable with her body and being touched and sex. So she goes and hires him to help teach her, get her acclimated, get her, you know, a little bit more used to physical intimacy. I just, I liked everything about it. And I'm really excited for The Bride Test, which is her second book. I can't wait to read more from her. And she, it just was so well done. I actually listened to this in audiobook format and really liked the audiobook format. And then somebody got an extra book of the month of this and sent it to me. It was one of our book club picks for the book Hangover Book Club, which is no longer R.I.P. Book Club. But it was by far one of the best books that I read because of the book club and it was really really good. It's very sexy. It has like graphic sex scenes in it so if you're not into that maybe don't read this but if you can handle that you like that kind of story then this is going to be one that I think you're going to really really enjoy. It was very beautifully done and I've seen a lot of people who don't really read romance and don't really do contemporary like this who read this because of the hype around booktube and still really really loved it. So you never know maybe give it a try. And then at number six, coming in a little bit low, under the top five, but still really, really good, was Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno. You guys know this is Chelsea from Chelsea Delling Reads, like favorite book of the year. And I really, really loved it. I think what happened with this was that I read it in one day. I think I got the ebook from my library and read it really quick in one day. And I don't think I sat with it enough. It has very whimsical, magical realism vibes in a contemporary setting. It's feminist and it's strong. It has hard hitting topics. It definitely made me cry. It is very poignant, but there's always something that sits just a little bit off with me about Katrina Leno's writing. Everything All at Once also just sat a little bit off for me and ended up like a 4.5-ish. This one I think I rated five stars, but it was probably more like a 4.5 as well. It's just not quite there, but it's so stinking close and was just such a surprise read for me. This one is one that I will be rereading in January. It did not make it on my January TBR because I hadn't confirmed that I was going to be a part of Miss Sassy Cassie's Sassy Book Club. This will be the read for January. Our live show will be February 1st and I think at 10 o'clock my time on sat on Cassie's channel and I just I'm really looking forward to the read, read of this because I really want to take my time with it and see what I think of it upon reread. Then we're going to start jumping into the top five books of 2018 and I know a couple of these are going to be controversial. A couple of these definitely have very polarizing opinions but um number five is Furyborn by Claire Legrand who is an author that I found in 2018. I got an arc of this. It is a big book and I got an e-arc of this so this is a very sizable book to read in ebook format. But I did a buddy read of this. I do think the buddy read probably helped enhance my feelings about the book. I, there were things that we saw coming. There were things we didn't see coming. There was complex relationships. There was dual timelines. Usually I hate dual timelines. I liked it in this story. You see where it's going from the beginning. So there's not like a whole lot of mystery about certain aspects of this plot but it's still woven so well. I loved the magic. I love the strong female characters. I loved the sex positivity. Both of our female main characters, I think are either bisexual or like on a queer spectrum. They are not both straight. There's a Pegasus in this, guys. Like, I'm sorry, but I'm in. I'm 100% in if you give me a Pegasus. If you give me magical pets, I'm your bitch. Have I read it again? No. Do I want to? Kind of. Yeah, I kind of do. It is a beast and I kind of want to just dive into the story again. I'm really looking excited. I'm really, really excited for Kingsbane in 2019. I can't wait to see where Claire goes with this series, with these characters and with her writing in general. Plus she got like so lucky on the cover design. Like this is a gorgeous cover. It's just a beautiful book. Um, I'm sure you've heard a lot about it, but there's people that absolutely loathe this book. I really, really love it. So there's that. 
Also, Simon, Simon in low slung linen pants can get it. Get it. That is all. At number four is a hard hitting contemporary, and I think like one of my only real hard hitting contemporaries on this list. But it is A Heart in a Body in the World by Deb Coletti. This one is one that I was offered an arc of at BookCon and I went, nah, not for me, don't think I'm going to like it. And then Madeline uh, started talking about it and I realized I should probably read this. I went ahead and went to NetGalley and got approved for an e-arc of this and read the e-arc. And then I was gifted this very, very kindly for Christmas because I wanted to have my own copy because I know I want to reread this at some point and annotate it. It's difficult to read at times like it's heartbreaking tragic but it's also so hopeful and inspiring too so this follows annabelle after a really tragic event has occurred i don't want to say what that tragic event is i know some people have on booktube and on like their reviews and things but i do think that finding out what exactly happened to her is a part of the journey of this book because throughout it you know something tragic happens, but you don't know exactly what it is. And she's decided she can't cope with it. So she decides to take a run from where she is, I believe over like Seattle, Washington area, over to Washington, DC. She just starts running. She starts running and she's not gonna stop. And it is painful at times. She obviously, like there, there's no way you can run like that without blisters and pain and injuries. And But it's so inspiring too. Her grandfather is adorable. He follows her in an RV so that he, she has somebody to meet up with at the end of each night and she starts calling attention to the world and the chaos around this tragedy that occurred to her and starts raising awareness for it and starts to heal and work through her things while she's out there on the roads and in the woods just running and in her own headspace and you really see her work through this trauma and she is in touch with a therapist. It's not like she's doing this and hurting herself without like professional medical attention. She's getting professional help as well, but it was just an amazing look at uh, the world that we live in right now, and it was very timely and very poignant, and I loved everything about it. So that, for sure, makes my top five. One, two, and three are interchangeable depending on my mood, kind of, but like, uh, God, oh, I don't know how to do this. Okay, I'm just gonna pick it. I'm gonna pick it. I'm gonna say number three is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. You guys know I am garbage for the Cruel Prince series, for the Folk of the Air. Love everything about it. I did not get an arc of this. I did read the arc of the Wicked King already, which is coming out like Monday, Tuesday. I should have it on Monday because I got the Alcrate exclusive box, which I will be unboxing here. I love it. I love it. I love Jude. She doesn't make logical choices. She's rash and she is impulsive but she's doing whatever she can to fit in in this really cruel fey world and it's got some intense bullying and it's dark and it's twisted and there's murder and there's political intrigue and there is scorned love and just oh god it's so good it's so good visceral at times and i love everything about it everything about it and this girl who will stop at nothing to feel like she belongs in a world that feels like home to her. I read it so early in the year that I feel like maybe I'm forgetting how much I love it. I should probably reread it again and then read The Wicked King, but I probably won't right now because I have so much on my TBRs. But this is a phenomenal book. I love it. Anybody who says they don't, that's fine. You're wrong, but that's fine. I adore it. It's a great book. Number two is one that I don't think I've stopped talking about since I read it. It's one that I have already reread this year. One of two books on this list that I've reread this year. Read for the first time and reread this year. And that is Strange Grace by Tessa Grattan. This is everything I want in a book. It is witchy. It is magical. It's dark. It's eerie. It's twisted. It makes you feel things. It freaks you out a little bit. Precious, precious characters. You've got Merwin and Ren and Arthur and these kids that live in a town where nothing bad happens to them. Everything is good. And everything is good because every seven years, the best boy gets sacrificed to these woods because a deal was made between a witch and the devil hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And Merwin is one of the witches that oversees this town and makes sure that the deal is upheld. And Ren is what the whole town knows to be the best boy. Arthur is somebody who is very gender fluid. They were raised by their mother as a little girl so that they could have no possibility of being the best boy. 
and they struggle so much with their identity and their gender and where they fall and it explores toxic masculinity and how they overcompensate for what their mother did to them when they were young and it's got Ren who's ready to die for the protection of this town that he loves so much. Merwin who is so desperately in love with both of these boys and these boys who are so desperately in love with her and it's like the perfect blend of everything for me. When I read this book it felt like coming home, like finding something that I was meant to find, reading a book that was meant for me. And I love absolutely everything about it. It is one of my favorite books, bar none. The writing is so beautiful and Tessa Grattan quickly became one of my favorite authors just with this book alone. But I do have Queens of Innislear, which I do also want to read soon. Also Blood Magic, I think, by her. I've got a couple books by her that are on my TBR. I'm, I'm hoping to really just love the rest of her work as well. But this is just stupid good. Stupid, stupid good. And then number one for 2018 releases should be no surprise to anybody. I read it, I raved about it, I made everybody else read it, and then I reread it with a buddy read with the author herself so I could ask them questions and pick their brain. And that is The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw, which I bought because the cover is stupid gorgeous. Like, who is her cover designer? It is amazing. I have read it and tabbed this just a couple times. I tabbed it once the first read, again the second time. Some of these pages are warped from tears like you could see in the back here. Like some of these are like all warped and warbly because I cried on them. It is so, so atmospheric and so phenomenal and I love it with my whole heart. Is it free of problems? Hell no. Hell no. But sometimes a book just gets you. You read it at the right time for the right reasons in the right headspace and it connects with you. And that's what happened with this one. It really, really got in my soul. I obviously had a lot of thoughts when I read this book about the writing style and things that were happening. I felt like I was there. It, the setting was an actual character in this book. It was so real and so alive for me and while I saw certain plot points coming like all of the plot points coming I still really genuinely enjoyed it. Is there insta love in this? Yep. Did I care? Nope. Uh, the one thing that I did have an issue with that I've actually talked to Shay about is the consent issue in this because essentially you have three witches that were drowned and they come back um every summer and inhabit the body of three girls on this island to take boys and drown them. While they're inhabiting these girls' bodies, if they do anything with anybody, then obviously consent can't be given for the body that they're inhabiting, for the host body. Obviously it's still their body. It's not the ghost's body that they're using and manipulating, so that leads to consent issues if there's any romances. And there's a particular scene in this, without being spoilery, that reads very, very romantic. Sex is being had. Now when I spoke to Shay, she said that she really likes to write things open-ended, but that in her mind that 100% does not happen. And when she was writing it, that 100% does not happen. However, she left it open-ended enough that you can assume that's what happened, which is troubling for me because of the consent issues happening. Um, it helps to know that's not where her mind was at when she was writing it. However, I still loved the hell out of this book. Is it perfect? No, it was perfect for me. Strange Grace was a better written, less problematic, amazing novel than The Wicked Deep. They're really stinking close for me, but I think just how hard I fell for this book right off the bat has to be my number one for the year, right? Like it would be weird if I picked anything else, wouldn't it? <laughs> So those are my top 10 reads for 2018 that were released in 2018. I can't wait to talk to you about the rest of my favorites from this year. It was a good year. Until then, if you like this video, be sure to give me a big thumbs up. Let me know down in a comment below what your favorite title for 2018 was that was a 2018 release. And hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.